Welcome to this overview of design for manufacture and assembly. Uh, as a company, we DSPAT are engaged in uh, supporting DFMA for India and Southeast Asia. Uh, we help uh, uh, academia and engineering service outfits to deploy DFMA in a meaningful manner in their new product initiatives. All right. So, as a methodology, DFMA was uh, introduced in the early 1970s to help uh, uh, automotive and aerospace organizations to have a way of measuring design uh, cost at the design stage. Uh, that said, uh, since 1983, it is also available in the form of a computing tool and today we have version 10 of the DFA DFM software. Uh, this tool was uh, also awarded the National Medal of Technology in the year 1991. Uh, which is the highest honor given to innovators in the United States. Uh, so, let us just have a quick intro to this uh, concept of DFMA. If I were to ask you to guess what this is and if I would probably give you about a few seconds to think through it, you would probably come out with different uh, uh, points of view of what you perceive of what this product is. And let us say if I give you another perspective of the same product, probably you are getting a figure of going to figure out what this product uh, is uh, probably intended to do. Well, of course, yes it is, uh, it is probably a peeler used to shave off uh, and peel vegetables. Now, the question is when there are so many such peelers in the market, why develop another new peeler? Well, new product development is an ongoing process and uh, always this is a quest for man to look at a better way of doing things and DFMA assist uh, that process of uh, exploring that another way and finding out a meaning through it by way of uh, identifying that uh, new uh, process or product uh, in, a in a competitive manner by saying whether your cost is uh, much better at building that product or not. Uh, I am sure you would probably agree with this philosophy that uh, they say it is the early morning sun that casts the longest shadow. Uh, similarly, in the product design world, it has been proven from hundreds of industrial case studies that by uh, the decisions taken at the initial stages of the product design have the largest influence on the total cost of the product. It is the designer's intent that reflects on what material he chooses to produce his product and the material requires a certain kind of equipment or tools in order to process the material and skills in order to use the equipment to process the material. So, this, uh, there is a snowball effect of his design decisions that reflect which is shown on the uh, y axis here, but his overall intent reflects on the total cost of the product and that is why we would say that design actually in a way dictates the cost of a, a product build. That said, DFMA has two modules that look at this aspect of a product design, the first of which is called the design for assembly. The design for assembly software has uh, two modules, one is called the design for assembly module and the other one is called design for manufacture. To highlight the design for assembly uh, uh, module, I have uh, showcasing this uh, simple sub assembly here. Now, if you were to analyze this for product simplification, there will be several ideas that could come out as a part of the process. But in, in the design for assembly, we have a particular way in which we look at uh, analyzing. So, we would say what does this product uh, or sub assembly look like when it is fully assembled and what are these components doing there? For example, what is this base part doing there? It is a foundation on which this whole sub assembly is built. What is the next component? The brackets, why are they there? It is holding this uh, spindle into position. So, who is the functional part? The spindle, why? Because this is providing some sort of a rotational movement. So, as we analyze these uh, importance of the parts, we also do what we call as a part count. And so, this 24 part component could uh, probably be uh, simplified in these following steps. For example, the first of which is shown here. It is quite evident that if you were to integrate the threading as a part of the base, you would probably be able to save so many of these fastening components. So, a 24 part product would probably be a 8 part candidate. A uh, little more improvised design would probably look something like this, have a single part which could probably be a sheet metal or plastic component and hold that spindle in position by means of uh, plastic or metal or uh, rubber retainers, uh, a 4 part candidate. And uh, a further much more ideal design would look something like this. Uh, a sheet metal base and probably snap with the spindle into position. Uh, from a 24 part component you have a potential 2 part candidate, but the, uh, what we are trying to advocate is not let us go build cheap products. What we are trying to say through this uh, mechanism is you have a tool that can help you to break down your original design intent under the components that go into it 
and identifying the cost of material and manufacturing that goes individually and then collectively. Well, you also have to spend on in assembling this components on in, on your shop floor or your manufacturing table. So the cost of tools and tackles that go into the, the assembly, and uh, like in this case, we have purchased components like fasteners in this uh, example shown here. Uh, so all of this totals to a net estimate of what this product is going to cost you. That said, imagine applying the same methods for all of these new ideas that you one would come out with and you have a way of comparison how good or bad your current design ideas are in comparison to the original intent and that is what the design for assembly module is intended to do. So why would one want to do DFA as a part of the design process? Well, there are two main benefits. One is to have a product which is uh, having fewer parts that can achieve the functionality that you in originally intended. The other one is having a simplified assembly. A fewer parts means lesser inventory, lesser process, uh, lesser drawings to verify, lesser subcontractors to work with. So the snowball effect of that is endless on the left hand side. And the other one is your simplified assembly is intended to look at the product from a maintenance, repair, warranty, service point of view. So a simplified assembly facilitates uh, all of these uh, requirements that may be uh, a part of the product's uh, life cycle. The other module that we have in, uh, in our software is called the design for manufacture module. So in order to explain that, I have taken a simple example of a sheet metal component here. Let us say as a company we do need to make some 10,000 parts uh, and if you look at the guidelines of sheet metal and if you compare, it says that uh, it is a bad idea to have uh, complex bent uh, parts. It is a better uh, opportunity to save on material if you have simpler parts. So that is what is shown on the right side of the screen which says the right design and the one on the left says it is probably not so good a design because you are definitely going to waste material uh, from the blank. Now if we were to compare these two designs and uh, have a way of measuring the contribution in terms of material process, setup, tooling, rejection that goes into each of these component builds. What do you think is going to be uh, the candidate that wins as the most economical component to be built? That said, I have another question for you to think through which is uh, what do you think is important for a product design? Is it a cost of the individual part or the total cost of using parts to achieve a functionality? As you think through this, let us go to the remaining slides. Uh, so if we do a scientific analysis of these two parts using the design for manufacture method, you will be surprised to see that. Uh, at one aspect we were probably right which is the cost of material uh, in the one that is marked as wrong being higher but it uh, wins out in the other attributes that contribute to the cost of manufacturing the part which is in terms of the setup, the process in one tool you could probably stamp this part and once the part is formed you have a completed component while in the other case on the right hand side which is marked as right uh, you will see that the component requires further assembly and that adds to the total cost of this uh, product and uh, you, you can figure out for yourself from that table that is highlighted that uh, which is a more economical design. So I will rephrase the question which is on the top left hand corner of the screen. So what is important to a product design is not individual cost of parts but the total cost of using parts that is to achieve the functionality originally intended for the product. Let us look at another one more example uh, of a published case study from one of our customers. If you would see most of the automotive world uses uh, casting as the process for manufacturing brake shoes. Uh, and uh, in the process of looking at uh, newer ways of manufacturing, our, uh, uh, we have explored on a, let us say make manufacturing the same part through sheet metal. Now previous example we saw two parts were more expensive than one. Here if I let us say we want to make 20,000 trucks worth of uh, brake shoes. Uh, it is very evident if I ask you a gut feel question what do you think is going to be more expensive. Uh, while I leave you to think through this, uh, what you will get as a surprising result from the DFM is though you have 5 sheet metal parts on the left hand on the which is, uh, which is showed as a welded assembly in the slide here which evidently requires 5 parts to be made. They have to be held in a precision jig and uh, welded. While on the right hand side the sand cast component probably just has to be casted and a few secondary tertiary machining steps and the component is ready to go. Further the sand cast has been around for quite some time in the automotive world as a component for brake shoes. But what comes out evidently when you do a scientific analysis using DFM is 
uh, the cross sectional thickness in sand casting adds quite a large contribution to the total cost of the product and that leads to the substantial saving that you could probably get if you were to invest in a welded assembly. And this again is a published case study and uh, it is got a meaningful uh, ROI uh, return on investment which leads the, uh, the group of engineers or the company to investigate whether a welded assembly would actually make meaning in building a product more efficiently. So having said uh, a quick an overview of the two tools uh, that we have, uh, what we would like to uh, emphasize is that the DFMA is a, a procedure to systematically analyze and quantify product design and it has two important modules. One is the design for assembly module, the objective of which is to help to determine assembly time and cost and the other one is the design for manufacture module which helps as a guide to help you select as a user what is the apt process and material combination that can go into manufacturing your cellular parts. Uh, further if you look at what is happening in the industry and uh, generally the design process starts with the uh, coming out with the idea of the product and going through the engineering of it. Most cases that we have seen and it has been documented from several hundreds of case studies that till the prototyping stage everything is nice and beautiful but most of the bottlenecks arise when it comes to production. Introducing DFMA at the initial stages of the product uh, design cycle can largely reduce the launch time by up to 50 percent. So what I am saying is if you are doing your vehicle and development in two years you could probably do it in one year. Really how DFMA helps we will probably try to show you as we go through the overview of the two modules. Uh, DFMA is a product centric tool and uh, so we the DFMA people focus on this big blue pie segment of the product which is the piece part cost and uh, we will show you how as we show you the as we go through the overview demonstration. Uh, I will come back to the slide eventually uh, let us get into the DFA software. So in order to uh, have, a quick, have a quick look at uh, the two modules of our software let us start with design for assembly. We will do this whole presentation based on the uh, sample sub assembly that we show in this uh, design for assembly module. Uh, this is the image of what the uh, uh, sub assembly we wish to analyze today and uh, let us have a quick look at what the sub assembly would look like uh, from an assembly standpoint. A quick video that captures this. So you see that the base is the first part that is going to be assembled followed by a sequence of components. Uh, the one that looks like a cylindrical component is a motor that is supplied by a vendor uh, and let us assume the rest of the parts are made in house by the uh, for this product to be fabricated. So this product uh, we are going to analyze using the design for assembly tool. So what you see on the uh, as a graphic user interface of the design for assembly software it has a, is a three part window. The one on the left hand side is called the product structure chart. It is the sequence of the bill of materials but as it would one would uh, visualize it to be assembled on the shop floor to form the complete product and for each component in the bill of materials on the, on the product structure chart you have a detailed question and answers panel on the right hand side which is uh, the inputs given by the user. Uh, as, uh, as what he foresees to be the uh, importance of the attributes related to this part, component, probably even operations which is standard or non-standard. As he uh, investigates and clicks on these uh, options for answers, he is going to get a rapid feedback of his intent on the bottom which includes the cost of the, the process time, the process cost and if he is also familiar with the cost of the individual components, you could probably go and uh, look at the manufacturing data which says uh, uh, input the value of the part cost item of these items and you also get the total cost of the product as we build this analysis. So let us do a simple overview demonstration of this product that we just now saw. A few steps just to highlight the kind of questions that uh, are in, uh, asked for um, in the review of your product and how does it translate in terms of giving you a, a feedback based on your intent. So let us say we start off this overview uh, and the first window. So the most important uh, entry that you would want here is probably the number of products that you would like to uh, make and we would call it a uh, life volume. The, it, in, it, it, it just reflects 
what's our design, uh, what's the idea that we have of how many number of products that you would like to make of this particular design. And the rest of the components uh, that are there in the questionnaire include what is your labor cost, what is your probably plant efficiency. Let's go add a first component here and we will call it the base as you saw in the uh, assembly video. And uh, starting with that component, the questions on the right hand side you see are arranged very nicely in group boxes. So, first of the questions is what kind of a component is it? So, this is a part, I will go select that. The next few questions ask you to visualize what is the overall weight profile of this product. So, this is a component which has less than uh, 2.27 kilograms of weight. So, I will select that, I will uh, go and say what is the overall envelope uh, dimensions of this part. Now, one thing that comes to mind here is, hey I have complicated uh, part, I have a part which has multiple features. So, why envelope dimension? Well, no matter how complicated your geometry is, what Boothroyd asks you to visualize is what is the actual space that the component occupies uh, and which is important in transportation, storage, handling and how the operator interacts with the part. So, that is why we would uh, uh, amortize our overview of the component as either a cuboidal shape giving x, y, z dimensions or a cylindrical shape giving uh, a circular diameter and a height. The next question that it asks is what is the importance of this part or how do you classify this part? Is it a fastener, nuts, bolts, rivets, washers? Is it a connector, tubes, conduits, cables, wires, ropes or is it a part which has some function? So, under this category of functions which is the main definition of which the, the design assembly module revolves around in giving you a indication of your design uh, through an efficiency measure is this question called minimum part criteria. Basically what the question there says which we are highlighting here uh, uh, means uh, what do you think is the importance of this part? Is it there because it is a base part? Well, in this case it is. So, I will select this option first, I will answer the other questions as we go through the presentation. The next question that it wants to know is how symmetric is this component? Is it symmetric about all the three axes? Is it symmetric about one axis? So, it is easy for the comp uh, user to pick and place or it has no symmetry at all which means when there is a component based on its symmetry the time penalty for the operator to pick and place a component sort of multiplies depending upon how symmetric or asymmetric a component is. And the next question that set of question that is asked is how does the operator interact with the part? So, if you can visualize uh, somebody assembling a product two things happen one is going to handle the part to bring it to the point of assembly the other thing is how does he insert the part into the, uh, uh, the, the product structure to form the complete assembly. So, there are two questions that are asked there what is the handling difficulties, what are the handling requirements, what is the securing process and what is the securing uh, or insertion difficulties. So, we will go through these questions as we uh, try to an, uh, answer some of the questions for this part, but in this case this is a comp component which is fairly easy to handle, does not have any handling requirements, it is the first part. So, we will say it is going to be secured later and from an insertion difficulty standpoint it does not have any difficulties. So, let us go to add the next part okay. and this one is uh, the set of uh, brass bushings. The first component was an aluminum base and the second one is a brass bushing. So, we have two such parts and uh, it is less than 2.27 kilograms in weight, it is fairly small component of uh, 15 mm dia and about 20 mm height and uh, the envelope shape is so, uh, fairly, uh, it is a cylindrical component. So, we are going to select that and uh, now the question that is answers is what is the importance of this part? Of course, it is not a fastener or a connector. So, definitely it is a part which has some function. So, if you look at the function part, is it a base part? Obviously not. Is it there, does it uh, revolve or move uh, or the, does this part move in response to the other components in the design? No. Is it made of the different material? Let us ponder for a moment. Yes, it is made of a different material. It is made of brass and the other base component is made of aluminum, but that is not the critical reason why this component should be there. This product can work even if we did not have the bushings. So, we will say though it is there as a part of this design, it is probably a redundant component. So, I am going to give a criteria of this part as a component that has no important uh, uh, fundamental reason to exist. Then I go ahead and answer the other questions which is how do I handle it, uh, there is no handling difficulties I could handle it with one hand as I am showing it to you right now and uh, there is no uh, handling difficulties. The other point beautiful part about our software is if you do not understand what these questions mean for example, I do not know what nest or tangle means I can click on it, I can click on the on context help. We have a very nice dictionary uh, uh, which has uh, all these um, questions mean and we have detailed explanations through this on context help that is a part of our tool. And this has been documented over the last 3-4 decades, so it is easier and self explanatory in most cases. The next question it asks is how do you secure it? 
So let's visualize. This is a bush. I'm going to place it and I'm going to probably use a press fitting tool. So I'll say I want to secure it later. So I'll select that option. I'll go and select what I call in our library an operations library. So we have a standard of which is available as a part of our library. So we have a library of operations that has been documented over the last few decades, uh, commonly used in the industry world. And uh, it's available at your disposal to pick and use it as a part of your analysis. So I'm going to pick uh, this option for securing a part that has already been uh, selected and use this press fitting operation and bring it into the uh, my analysis. So I'll double click on that, get it into the analysis and I'm just going to say that the number of repetitions that I have here, I have two bushes, so I'll select two. So the time for a default press operation is a part of our database, but you may agree or disagree with this because of what your actual practices on the shop floor and use that as the input for this uh, entry here for the time value. In case there are other uh, issues associated with this assembly, uh, this is a difficulty that also can be accessed by clicking on these questionnaires that are there as a part of the press fit operation. So let's go add the third component which is probably in our case a motor and let's assume for this presentation that the motor is supplied by a vendor. Uh, so the motor if you see uh, what's the definition of a motor is it part it is a sub assembly or is it a, so it is a sub assembly. Uh, so I'll click on the sub assembly option you can you will see that when I do that on the product structure I get the ability to build the components uh, under this uh, sub assembly that I have as a part of my original design. But I choose not to do the analysis of the parts inside the motor. So I will treat this motor as a sub assembly but I am not going to analyze the parts in the motor. So that is the third option that I have under the parts nomenclature which says sub assembly not analyzed. So again the next question is what is the weight profile less than 2.27 kilograms. Uh, what is the overall envelope dimensions? It is fairly cuboidal so I am going to select the cuboidal dimension uh, shape. I will also give the envelope dimensions. Actually with each of these entries that you uh, what the user uh, keys in the kind of question and answers panel uh, profile would probably change on the right hand side. Uh, and that is why our tool is called design for assembly product simplification which means uh, it does not bother the user with all the questions at the same uh, one go. It probably allows him to answer subsequent questions if a previous questions warrant that some more details have to be provided. We will see as we, how that happens as we go through this presentation. So I will give the next question which is related to the symmetry of the motor. Uh, so this motor is, has a fairly uh, square base so I could probably rotate it about one axis. Uh, you will notice that if the symmetry is high or if this is more symmetric the lesser is the time. Okay. Uh, as you can see in the bottom left hand corner of the process chart. Uh, so uh, an asymmetric part will take obviously a little more time uh, for assembly and added to that it will complicate the assembly time if you have more difficulties in handling. Uh, which add to the penalty of handling and also in terms of the insertion of the product. So coming to the motor, uh, I have a base, I have these bushes which have been fitted, now I have this motor. If you visualize, I am going to analyze, I am going to align the motor to such that the motor screw slots align with the slots for the screw on the base. So I am going to do this alignment and then pick screws and fasten it. So now I come to the questions where I have to answer the handling requirement, it is easy to handle how do I secure it? Normally uh, I would say I am going to secure the part uh, and hold it down so that this holding down allows me to align the screw for uh, fastening the motor which means I have two issues here. One is uh, the align I am holding down and fairly because in the handling difficulty I have it is a not self locating component. So these kind of visualization of what your assembly steps are either yourself as a designer or with the operations uh, people who actually facilitate the assembly leads to a good understanding of what are the issues related to uh, or how you should probably answer these questions in this Q&A panel. Let us answer one more question before we move on uh, uh, which is what is the minimum part criteria for this motor? Is it a base part? Of course not. Uh, does it move relative to other parts? Uh, well we have taken a sub assembly and not analyzed. Well the motor is there because one of the components that is the spindle rotates and that is important for this motor to sub assembly to work. So technically it is this uh, capability of uh, move relative to other parts which we are highlighting here is the, uh, is the importance of this motor being a functional part in this design. So what is the importance of this minimum part criteria questionnaire altogether? Let us go to the main motor assembly. You see on, the, on this column here we have a the opportunity which says uh, design for assembly index. 
So, Boothroyd's method has a way of documenting your design and comparing it to the world's best practices and coming out with an eff efficiency measure. So, you can say how good or bad my current design is compared to the world's best practices. Okay? So, this is actually a empirical formula we could probably discuss this uh, as we uh, eventually, but this is just for you to know that the intent actually gets captured in these attributes also that you get, met, get a measure of a comparable uh, comparison of your design against these practices and get you a number which says how good or bad your design is. Um, now that you have the motor, uh, let us just do one more component uh, before we move on to the other attributes of this tool. We have the motor screw. So, these motor screws are the ones that are going to hold the motor into the base by fastening the motor to the base part. So, what is the motor screw? It is a part, how many motor screws you have, two numbers. Uh, what is the overall uh, weight less than 2.27 kilograms, uh, envelope dimensions and envelope weight. Uh, that said, what is the importance of the part? Fairly a motor screw is a fastener. So, once I select fastener, you will notice that the minimum part criteria questions are no longer there, which means a uh, fastener no matter what is just used to hold uh, two components together and there is no other criteria for it to be important. So, let us go ahead and look at the other attributes which is the handling difficulty. Uh, fairly easy to handle, uh, how are you going to uh, secure it. So, on the securing method obviously, the choice here would probably be to select as the threaded fastener. So, when I select threaded fastener you see one another question pops up which says hey how are you going to fasten this using a power tool, screwdriver so on and so forth. Like I said earlier the question and answers panel are so designed that you come up with subsequent questions based on a previous questionnaire that you have answered. So, if you for example, if this was not a threaded fastener, but if it was a snap fit, okay, it would select the uh, uh, characteristics for snap fitting. If it was a rivet, it would bring up the operation characteristic for riveting. Right? But right now, it is a threaded fastener. So, let us click on it. Let us say it is going to use a screwdriver. As I am going to select these options, you will see the implication of this uh, selection on the bottom left hand corner, which is how much of process time it takes to fasten a screw two numbers with the five revolutions with the screwdriver. Okay? So, the question is what if this was not five revolutions, what if it was ten revolutions okay? and I just change the terrain and you will see the implication of that uh, uh, highlighted there. Now, this brings us to a creative question that as designers we tend to just uh, uh, meet the functionality of a part, we want to put two parts together, we take this depth, we take a standard screw and probably insert it as a part of your analysis. But do you know what is the implication of selecting this screw which has say 5 revolutions in order to get itself fastened and hold these two parts together vis a vis something which requires more number of fasteners or more number of fastening action. And this is how this uh, tool helps to sort of brainstorm around these kind of uh, final aspects of your product to help you to see or assist in reducing the assembly time. We will see the implication of this fastener. So, in this manner like we have showed you in these few steps we can go on building the product structure and what would probably be uh, of the full assembled product would uh, look something like this. Uh, the only difference between what we showed in the initial demo is we did not add these pictures or uh, of what the part looks like which is a good way of documenting your, uh, your design. So, what I have on the left hand side is a full product structure of this product that I intended to assemble. And uh, I can review this design by spreading it out as a worksheet which most industrial engineering uh, analysts would do, but that is not only the scope of what this uh, tool is capable of doing. The importance of this uh, DFA tool to assist the engineer is with this intelligent uh, very, very useful feature called suggestions for redesign. So, what is popping up here is your list of parts and on the right hand corner is the opportunity to uh, improvise the the, the product. So, it lists out the, the category for improvements under these three headers, the first of which is called candidates for elimination other than fasteners and uh, connectors and category 2 is fasteners, connectors and uh, separate operations. So, let us look at fasteners. In this design, uh, we have four different types of fasteners okay, and that is highlighted there. When I look at a product like this and uh, a, a breakdown of our uh, inputs, it becomes easy for us to identify and question the importance or relevance of the parts in this design and quickly go about doing creative brainstorming of how you could probably uh, reduce the parts. For example, if I see cover screws here, there are four cover screws and if you recollect the video that we played, 
those are the four cover screws that finally come to assemble the cover in position. Hypothetically, let us say if we were to do something like this, instead of four cover screws, if there was a way, if there was a way okay, of assembling the product uh, that cover with two screws, what would happen? Okay. So, let us do this, let us make a quick copy of this current analysis that we have, we will call it a new idea with two screws. So, we will make a copy and uh, we will rename this and say cover screws 2 number for the file name and uh, we will go to the questions panel and go to the cover screws. If you see there are 4 cover screws there, I am uh, going to change it to 2 and uh, fair enough now what? Well, I am going to look at a quick review of these 2 ideas by doing a comparison of, uh, of these files by picking up the current design and my proposed new design which I just now did and comparing them and saying okay, we would probably get a rapid feedback of your design intent. So, what you see there uh, is uh, the time for assembly, the number of parts reduced and so on and so forth. Let us say if you have a quick look again of the fully assembled cover, all right, if I just bring up the 3D CAD image of that part. So, I have got another view of what the… so if you maximize this is what the, our cover looks like. If I were to actually quickly sketch uh, what this final cover uh, assembly looks like, uh, there is a potential opportunity if I just move the exploded uh, view uh, video uh, a few steps back, you will see in order to do the act of covering, I have 2 separate sheet metal parts which are highlighted in green color. So, upon assembly they look like one envelope uh, cuboid. So, the opportunity for me exists that I can make this a much more simpler design which probably looks something like this that is uh, highlighted here. Okay. So, I so have created a third file which says what if we instead of having a cover which is going to be held by 2 screws have an entirely different design which so looks something like this wherein the cover and the end plate is one uh, envelope part and instead of having those separate 6 or 8 fasteners we have one envelope shape which, uh, which could be uh, which could be used to uh, cover this whole motor assembly. So, I have a third design that I have just now created. So, I want a quick comparison of this, I am going to take a rapid feedback of my design intent and I can break down into these 3 different attributes. Uh, I can select these 3 different files and create find out the uh, implications of this design. So, let us quickly look at for a few uh, at this report that is we have generated. So, the original intent was about 36 parts, when we removed 2 screws it was about 34 and our reduction in terms of the assembly time if you see from 260 seconds to about 245 and the overall efficiency that we can probably get as a betterment from this design is uh, highlighted there as the DFA index. But if I were to get rid of those fasteners altogether to form the part, I have a fantastic new uh, set of metrics and that is really very interesting and also achievable. So, usually this assembly level product design improvisation uh, happens like this progressively as you create an ID8 for different attributes. The important thing I like to say here is under the results I can generate several different types of reports very instantaneously and that is how we are helping design companies or design uh, designers to quickly have a, a rapid feedback of their design intent. So, I can look at probably the process time for these 3 different designs, it is an interesting attribute that you will probably come out and this attribute is very evident in most product builds which is the fasteners as you can see here is taking about close to 160 seconds of assembly time out of a total of 260 seconds of the products assembly. And look at what is there on the left hand side on the on the y axis, necessary items just contribute about 20 plus seconds. In most uh, products these fasteners and fastening elements contribute a large chunk of the assembly time while the actual functioning necessary parts from a fraction of the total assembly. And as good designers this intention is always to see how we could probably reduce this requirement for fasteners and fastening elements. Uh, so, these are several different capability measures you could do with the kind of reports we can generate through our tool. There are probably about 9 different types of reports that you can generate. Uh, so, let us pause for a moment here and then let us say now that I have a new intent of a component okay, which uh, as we are highlighting now, uh, uh, this is the proposed new design can which uh, looks like this. 
this is need not necessarily be a CAD model because most people when we would uh, visualize they are able to sort of uh, uh, they want to have a hasty realization of what their product looks like through a CAD tool. It need not necessarily be a CAD model it could just be a sketch or a drawing that you you came out with as you were having coffee with your friend and you want to investigate it. DFA DFM allows you to do that even without having necessarily engineered model of uh, your design intent. So, I have this overview of that envelope shape. I am going to take that intent from my design for assembly tool, bring it into design for manufacture. 